1-800-529-9626. Back with me again to answer all your questions, Steve Moore, Doug holtz -Eakin. And joining us now, Dr. Stephen Reisman, the director of the New York Cardiac Center. And I believe we have a question for you, a caller. Mary in Texas is calling in with her question. Mary, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you for taking me. Most uh, welcome. I was diagnosed with uterine cancer when I was 58. I got wonderful care at a nationally known uh, clinic here. That's good. And um, I recovered, and then four years out, it came back a second time, went mm -hmm. to my lungs, and they took care of it. And I've been on a low dose of chemotherapy. I'm just about, I'm entering my fifth year right now. A friend mm -hmm. told me that if I turn 76, if I'm 76 years old, and the cancer comes back that they won't treat it. Now I'm up and dressed and going to work every day. Wow. And um, I pay for my Medicare, I pay for my secondary insurance. All right. That, that sounds to me like a death sentence. If they're well, not gonna Mary, treat it. let's put it to Dr. Steve Reisman. Uh, under Obamacare, will she, will she get care? I think that's the fundamental question here. I don't think Obamacare directly will affect Medicare patients in the beginning because it's really for non-Medicare patients, but eventually if they start cutting Medicare reimbursements to doctors because they have to put more money into Obamacare, it could affect how many doctors are available to see patients. So down the road it could be a problem if Medicare payments are cut back. All right, so ultimately Mary could see some kind of impact. Steve, did I hear you say you wanted to join the conversation here? Well, I mean, this is an amazing story, and, and if you look at the, all the pages of uh, when the Obama administration says there's, you know, hundreds of pages of cost-saving measures in that bill, I mean, it's, 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 you know, incredibly complicated. But most of those cost savings are making decisions about not allowing people to get care. Now, I'm not certain about this type of situation, but there will be denial of care as a way to save money. That's the way that, that the central planned health care system works. Wow. I mean, yeah. this to me, this is the crux of the whole thing. Who gets care, at what price, and who do and we leave behind? Do we leave people right. behind? Uh, let me ask you a question on a totally different topic in a slightly different way. Dad. This is Mark writing on Facebook. He says, if this coverage must accept pre-existing conditions, like this lady had, mm -hmm. what will prevent anyone 25 to 100 mm -hmm. years of age to not purchase the insurance until they need it? Well, um, obviously the penalty is very low, and that's an incentive to not purchase the in insurance and simply take the penalty. Uh, there are enrollment periods. But the only real catch here is if you don't have insurance, you have to wait till the next enrollment period, and, and that's going to be the incentive to get in. But will it be strong enough? Uh, most people don't think so. We've got another caller, uh, Virginia, North Carolina, joining us now with a question about disability and the cost of Obamacare. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. Um and thank you. You're welcome. Um, I I was I too am in my fifties. Mm -hmm. I'm about to be fifty nine, and have a, a disability. Was fired from my job because of the disability, and I'm my disability insurance. My social security disability is one thousand four hundred and thirteen dollars a month. Right. So I don't get Medicare, I have to purchase an insurance policy now, and I, I can't, I mean, I, there's, there's no services, there's no medication, there's, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm trying to keep a house over my head, I mean, wh wh what do I do? Well, that's a great question. I think a lot of people are in the position of wondering whether they can afford Obamacare coverage, what do they do? Doug? Uh, there are a couple of different things. One, you can go to the exchanges and we know what the prices are and there is some subsidy help, but for many people it's still awfully tough, particularly because of the big out-of-pocket costs, the deductibles uh, that, that they're going to face. The second thing is many will be in a state where they don't qualify for Medicaid, they're not eligible for the exchanges, then they'd have to go out and buy with no help at all. And that's going to be a real problem. Yeah, I, we've heard from people in that scenario, right. and I think Virginia's concern is is the disability money she gets it's means that enough. she can't afford yeah. the insurance coverage, which is a, a terrible situation to be in. It's very tough to find a solution to that. Uh, Richard from Florida, his email is this. If you already have medical coverage that you are struggling to pay for yourself and you fall into the low-income category, will you receive a tax refund or a credit? Steve, what do you say to that? 
Well, if you're a low income, uh, you will get a subsidy. So uh, somebody who may not be able to afford the, the employer plan that they have could go into the exchanges and possibly find a better deal. Look, if you have a very low income, I don't know what this gentleman's income is, but maybe twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars a year. You know, it's the government pays for a lot of your health insurance. I mean, this is a cross-subsidy system. Well, and and and, and Dr. Steve Reisman, I want to bring you in here as a doctor. How do you respond to all these pressures? People don't have money. They can't pay for the insurance. You want to give them care, presumably. How do you respond? Well, th what we've done in our offices over the last few years because of the high deductible plans, we've started taking credit cards when people come in just in case you have a thousand dollar deductible and you know you have you have a lot of costs involved. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a problem because not everybody has credit cards and everybody can afford that. So I think what you're going to see is less number of doctors be able to participate in these plans because they don't know. We don't have a clue what your insurance covers and if you go to the doctor doesn't know what you cover how can you know that he's going to get paid and how do you how do you manage that it's a problem are, do you have friends who are doctors who are are, are going to leave the system we're seeing that already. People are not taking new Medicare patients because reimbursements have been cut back. People are, are, as I said, with high deductible plans, they can't take the patients. Patients can't afford the deductibles. It's an issue. It's an issue. Doug, you had a point? Look, this is uh, going to be a problem because we've seen before in the Medicaid program that just having an insurance policy doesn't mean you get to see <laughs> doctors. That's Good that. Point. And this right. program, with its tight networks, low reimbursements, and attempt to keep costs down, looks like the Medicaid of the future. This is a right. problem. and. Right. They're talking as if getting on a, a website and buying a policy is, is the, the end all be all. It's not. Getting good care is the end, and that's the problem. It's about quality of yeah. care at the end of the year. I, I think you've got to start thinking about that. Cost is important. It doesn't solve cost. It doesn't help quality right. of care. I'm not sure what we're getting here. Well, thanks, Steve. More from Doug and Dr. Reisman coming up. They're going to stay with us next. Our hour-long Obamacare question and answer session continues with a look at just what counts as income. When it comes to subsidies, we'll have the details. Stay with us. Least favorite cheese brand. Well, our phone lines are flooded, and the questions keep coming in. We're doing the best we can to pack them in here, but I, we may not get you all, but keep calling. Our panel of experts back to sift through all the Obamacare confusion by answering as many of your questions as we can. Let's welcome back Dr. Jeff Singer, Dr. Stephen Reisman of the New York Cardiac Diagnostic Center, and Dr. Dimitri Alden from Lenox Hill Hospital. Welcome to you all. I want to go to a small business question. This is an email from Gail in Florida. She says, where should a small business owner go for good coverage? As of January, my husband will no longer be able to be under my insurance because I am not on Medicare. He has two years until he is on Medicare and is a sole proprietor of a consultant business. Does he have to go on to the exchange? Dr. Reisman. I think the exchange is an option for somebody like that. He has to look at the different tier level of plans and decide how much of a deductible is he willing to meet, how much of a monthly, pa monthly payment is he willing to meet, and see which of his doctors will, will be participating in those plans. Those are the important questions I think he needs to answer. There are also private networks out there that may qualify. You may be able to look into the private networks in your state to figure out uh, if you can buy a policy there that might work as well. Uh, here's a question that I know a lot of our viewers are thinking about. This is an email from Mike in Nevada. He Yes. What will happen to concierge medicine and doctors? And Dr. Dimitri, I'll go to you. So, you know, we have a system of health care in this country where you don't really use insurance. You pay cash. Wealthy people do it. What happens to the doctors who operate in that system? Well, I think with uh, these changes, the uh, concierge medicine will expand because a lot of people going on the exchange, limiting themselves with uh, limited coverage, they will be in a position that they will quickly start to understand that their choices are limited, the quality of care is limited, so they will seek elsewhere and the concierge medicine will start to prosper and increase and I think right now it's a sort of a phenomenon for large cities and wealthy metropolitan areas right. but I think it's going to start to expand throughout the country. You know I, I think doctors would probably prefer it. it's much less of a headache I know a lot of people orient their entire practice to this let's answer a question an email question that is from Liz in Florida what if I sign up on the exchange and miss one or more payments Am I kicked out, and do I have to pay the penalty? Wow. Dr. Jeff Singer, what do you say? That's a great question. I, 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 if you miss one or more payments, 
there's a 90 day grace period. So you could actually go three months without uh, making a, a payment and not pay a penalty. After that, you, 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 uh, you pay the penalty because you basically don't have insurance. Wow, okay, that's a great question. Julia in Kentucky, if I lose, this is an email, if I lose my job mid-year, would I qualify for a subsidy based on current income or will they look at income for the whole year? This is a question, Steve, that we get over and over again. People want to know, if I move to another state, if I change my job, can I change my coverage? How is this going to work? I believe there's a COBRA implementation that's available where you can carry on the insurance and pay for it over a certain amount of time. Usually it's 18 months. I'm not exactly sure if that fits in that situation, but that would be, I think, a likely scenario. COBRA coverage, of course, is available to people who lose their job through their company. If their company offers it, it's typically pretty expensive. And, of course, you wouldn't get a subsidy to get that. I think that would be the concern of a lot of people out there. Uh, let's go to an email. Frederick in Oklahoma asks, what about those companies that have a three to six month waiting period before getting benefits? I mean, this is one of those technical details I don't think the people who are at the law understand. What happens to the employee? Is the company required to offer health care from day one? Dr. Jeff, what do you say? Well, companies are not required to offer health care from day one. There's still a three month waiting period. Uh, that's a minimum requirement. So um, there's not a change there. Okay, good to know. All right, Facebook, Lisa V, can you explain how the deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance work, and can you explain what extra taxes we pay due to Obamacare and how it will affect my HSA? Uh, <laughs> this is one of those questions that is so technical and so detailed, and it goes to the idea that this thing is so complicated, Dr. Dimitri, that I don't think people really are getting their arms around it yet. Uh, are there subsidies for co-pays, for co-insurance, or does the, does the uh, subsidy only go to the deductible? Well, it's such a complicated subject that I think very, it's very hard to explain. I think a lot of people, a lot of doctors are still confused. There's so many regulations. One thing is clear, if you're below the poverty level, you will get your insurance for free. If you're above 400% of poverty level in terms of your income, you're going to pay a lot. Yeah, pick up the freight. <laughs> well, the devil's in the details, that's for sure. And we're just working through them right now, learning them right now. Thanks to Dr. Singer, Reisman, and Alden. We'll be right back. So I can reach out, I think.